everybody, welcome back and to episode 88 on this Tuesday night. Yeah. I almost said Thursday again. Uh, so, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, but we've, we've had a, a pretty decent um, start to the week. Have we? Except for snow. <laughs> yeah, we got legit snow yesterday. Yeah, it was like a blizzard for a while yesterday outside. It was kind of, I wasn't, I didn't believe it because it said, you know, 100% chance of snow. And I was like... Maybe just a little, like, snowflakes here and there. There's was, always snow in March. Yeah, it was legit. Um, several inches. Um, David had shoveled, so. And now it's all melted. Yeah. Or nearly all. It's almost all gone. But yeah. it was a mess yesterday, so it was the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, and it came down super fast. Um, we showed uh, in the previous yeah. thing, like, the beginning when it first started, and then, like, a few hours later, it was just, like, totally blanketed. It was pretty crazy. Um, so, uh, I... Was hope well. I didn't hopeful. I got boots for the first time uh, when we got the big snowstorm, and so I was like, I bet that's the only time I'm gonna be able to wear my boots. Yeah, so and I, then you put them away, which is I, why, yeah. which is why we got snow. <laughs> should have kept them by the door. You should have, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and we're out of salt, so they're not. You can't get get any more snow because we have no salt that's to right. put on the sidewalks. That's right. But you know what we have to talk about? What's that? Oh yes. <laughs> wait, wait for it. Oh, I got him getting pop ups. <laughs> Hold on, it's not working. <sighs> Stand by. Well, we'll just edit all this out. All right, <laughs> hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Keep, talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Get a drink of water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, go. You go ahead and you go ahead and talk. Okay. So uh, it is my um, birthday week. So uh, excited about that. Um, I know a lot of people, some people don't like to celebrate their birthdays as they're getting older, but that's not me. Uh, I totally love it, and I can't wait for it every year. I know exactly <laughs> what you're going to do. <laughs> it's not working. They don't have the lyrics though. Right. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> That's the point. It's the uh, I had it queued up, but it, it didn't work. Um, That's the. It's the uh, NCAA men's uh, basketball tournament uh, starting, well, really, it starts Thursday. It's all very weird, but... Um, it's very, I can't keep track. But uh, your uh, 2005 runner-up, uh, national champion runner-up, uh, University of Illinois Fighting Line are the number one seed in... I guess it's the Midwest region. It's all confusing because they're doing it completely differently. Yeah. And they're the second ranked team in the country right now, heading into the big tournament, which starts, as I said, Thursday, with um, uh, eight teams playing for the last four spots. And then it begins in earnest on, on, uh, on uh, Friday. And Illinois will play Drexel on Friday at about Is that noon an Iowa? Central Time. No, you're thinking of Drake. Oh, I am. Where is Drexel? We have to look that up. Yeah, I don't know where that is. Boy, it would have been I've really great it. if that worked uh, as planned. Uh, oh, it's in Philadelphia. Oh, Actually, I knew that, but I, I didn't know that at yeah. all. I've heard of them many times. Yeah, and uh, so uh, Gonzaga is the number one overall seed in the tournament. Illinois arguably is the second number one seed uh, by they don't really talk about that. They just talk about who's no, number one overall. Uh, but they will be playing Drexel. And um, the cool thing, actually the good thing, I don't know if it's cool or not, but the good thing is is that the entire tournament is going to be in essentially one location or in one area. Um, it's all going to be in uh, the state of Indiana, the Hoosier State, because the final four is in Indianapolis. Okay, is the Final Four always in the Indian No. Business? Okay. No. But it, it, it but does... But you went to a Final Four. Yeah, the only yeah. Final okay. Four I went to was 30 years ago exactly. That's why I thought, since you said Indianapolis, um, I thought, I wonder if that's where they always do, because I know you went there. No, they don't always do it there, but it is, you know, they rotate, and they go play in different places. But 
Um, I went to the one in, in uh, 1991, 30 years ago. Um, and right before we met. <laughs> well, a few years couple before. years. A yeah. couple years. But um, that year, the, I didn't have any tie to any school. It was uh, North Carolina, Duke, uh, UNLV, and Kansas. So, of course, I wanted to... That was before uh, North Carolina beat Illinois in the in the national championship game in 2005. Of course, Michael Jordan played at North Carolina, so I have, I've always liked Carolina anyway. Um, so I was rooting for uh, North Carolina. So naturally, they lost to Kansas in the first game, and then the hated Duke Blue Devils beat UNLV, uh, and so it was Duke against Kansas. And I'm no Kansas fan necessarily. You know what I? You know who I think was on that Kansas team though? Who? I think Kurt Heinrich was on that team. Oh really? Who ended up playing for the Bulls, um, but ultimately Duke won the national title just because everything you know had to go wrong. But this year, um, because of COVID, they're sort of following the the way that they did it in the NBA and the NHL last year for the playoffs. They're, all the teams are going to be in like, you know, in in a bubble in Indiana near Indianapolis, and then the final four will be in Indianapolis. So it's a little bit strange. There's the the play-in games. So there's 64 slots in the tournament, but there's 68 teams that make the tournament. So there's eight teams that play four games on Thursday to determine the last four spots. Not really the last four spots, because two of them will end up as 11, number 11 seeds, and the other two will end up as 16 seeds. And it doesn't really make any sense to me, because you'd think that the last eight teams would be, you know, the worst eight teams. Right. I hate to put it that way, because I'm sure they're all good. But you'd think that they would be all vying for the 16 seeds in each region. But that's not how it works. Yeah. I don't get it. But in any event, so two teams will be playing for the 16 seeds in two different regions, and two teams, or four teams will be playing for the two of the 16 seed slots, and four teams will be playing for two of the 11 seed slots. Anyway, so the playing games are on Thursday, and then normally the opening rounds are uh, Thursday, Friday, and then the second round, Saturday, Sunday, and so forth. Now it's going to be... I've actually worked in offices where they've had it on TVs. So, oh, yeah. Um, oh, we like always... Break rooms, so it was like always on where you could go in and just watch a little bit. We would always go, at, when I was at uh, the firm that I was a partner in, we always went, we'd go out to lunch and we'd watch some of the... We wouldn't watch that one. I had a friend in law school who would take this entire period of time off every year. I mean, he would study. And by the way, he's a very successful lawyer. But he would study, but but he would sit in front. He was a huge Indiana fan, and he would sit. That That's so funny. Because Indiana was very good back in the 80s. In fact, they won the national championship in 87. But he would, uh, you know, sit there glued to his TV, watching all the games as much as he could. Uh, and then he'd resurface a few weeks later. <laughs> uh, uh, hibernation. Yeah. Well, another guy I went to law school did the same thing with spring training. He was a, he was a year ahead of me in Illinois. But he would leave every spring and go to Florida and just hang out and watch spring training games. And that guy ended up being not just a successful lawyer, but he actually ended up representing a lot of the players. Yeah, he was like a sports... Yeah, uh... he, yeah. and I, we worked at the same firm for a while. But anyway, so, um, here, here's, so here's the deal. So Illinois plays Drexel. The, Illinois is the number one seed, Drexel 16 in their region, right? So, but the problem is, in our same region, um, the net, the the eight and nine seed is uh, Loyola against. Oh, I forgot who Loyola's playing. Uh, in any event, here we got to look up the the bracket. Um, That's tiny. Yeah, I know. I can't read <laughs> that. Um, but anyway, so Loyola is another Chicago school. And uh, I'm scrolling down because I'm looking at all the matchups right here. I'm looking for eight and nine. Oh, yeah, Loyola and Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's funny, too, because Georgia Tech, you know, in my day, Georgia Tech was a dominant basketball team uh, program. Um, but in any event, so Loyola plays Georgia Tech. So the eight and nine, the winner of the eight and nine plays the winner of one and 16. 
So the point being that there is a better than even chance that Illinois and Loyola will play uh, in the second round. And that's um, not a good thing. I mean, actually, yeah, I people mean, love that sort of thing. I hate it. Loyola yeah. is a Chicago team, a lot of fans uh, in the area, um, you know, of, of both teams. I have a lot of Loyola connections. My dad taught there for many years. Mm -hmm. My mom got her undergraduate degree there. So, several of my siblings went there. And, uh, you know, so I always was a fan in the old days, but I can't root for Loyola over Illinois. That's, you know, I spent six years of my life there, two degrees. Right. Exactly. That's my school, you know. Um, so it's disloyal to my old man, but I, I am... <laughs> he would not, understand, I'm sure. Uh, or wouldn't care. You know, that's the other possibility. That's true. But, but the other interesting thing about Loyola is... They are the only team in the state of Illinois, the only men's basketball team in the state of Illinois that's ever won a national title. Uh, whereas Illinois has not, um, you know, all the other programs that were pretty good from time to time, like DePaul, Northwestern's never won a national title. But Loyola had. Yeah, and we may have talked about this before, but there's the story of the, the Loyola won the national title in 1963. I was oh, alive. That was a long time ago. But not quite one year old. I was thinking you were going to say like 15 years ago or something no, like that. It's no, no. They've, like the, they've gone to the tournament. In fact, a few years ago, they made it to the Final Four. Um, but they, but that's that national championship is a thing of legend in all sports, but especially in Chicago sports, because back in 1963... Um, there was sort of an unwritten rule in college basketball that you could not play, teams couldn't play more right. than one black player at a time, right? And the coach of Loyola, George Ireland, was like, I don't care what your unwritten rule is, I'm putting my best players on, on the floor. And you know, Loyola's, Loyola is a city school. Um, they were never, so far as I know, never segregated, you know. So they had black athletes and, uh, you know, they obviously had white players too, but they had black players. And he put whatever combination made sense. Didn't matter. That's who he put on the court at any given moment. And so there were times when there'd be four black players, five black players on the court at the same time. And it was a big scandal because people thought they were breaking the rules, even though there was no actual rule to that effect. But he didn't care. So they were a very dominant team in 1963. 62, 63, they, they made, you know, they went to the NCAA tournament. And in those days, it wasn't, they didn't have all these at-large bids. You basically had to win your conference to go to the tournament. It was a much smaller uh, number of teams that made it. And so um, there, the, the, they won the national title. But the real story was not the national title game so much, is that in an earlier round, I think it was the I think it was the um, the regional final. So, the the game that would determine whether or not you got to the final four um, it was it was scheduled in uh, East Lansing, Michigan, um, but the opponent was Mississippi State. Of course, Mississippi was very segregated in 1962, but the coaches and players in Mississippi State were, were in favor of playing. They wanted to go to the tournament, and they were in favor of playing, even if they had to play Loyola. Um, and the University Board of Trustees voted in favor of them playing. However, um, a group of people who objected to them playing against a team that had multiple black players went and filed a lawsuit and got an injunction to prevent them from leaving the state of Mississippi so they couldn't go. So what they did was, this is insane. They, um, they set up, this is the way, I, I mean, I've read multiple articles, so if my memory is not 100% accurate, this is how I remember it. <laughs> they set up a decoy plane. You know, they're gonna fly to East Lansing from, what are, where's Mississippi State, Oxford, Mississippi? I have I no know. idea. Um, they, they, uh, they set up a decoy plane with a bunch of guys sitting in seats who were not actual players. They just put a bunch of guys in suits on the plane, pretended that they were the team. So the sheriff comes to serve the eviction, the, not the eviction, the injunction <laughs> order on the team so that they, you know, they can't leave. Um, and he hands it to, I think it was an assistant coach who was actually on the plane with these pretend players. And the sheriff allegedly 
says to the guy that he serves with the order, he says, now, I'm going to go to lunch, uh, to dinner or whatever. I'm going to go eat. And I'll be back in about an hour just to make sure you're still here. He was, you know, he's giving them time to take off, right? right. So the, the sheriff leaves. The real players get on the plane. The decoys get off the plane. The plane takes off and heads to Michigan. But the head coach wasn't with them. This is actually, for some reason, this is my favorite part of the story. <laughs> the head coach was afraid that he would, if you know, if he was personally served with a piece of paper, that then he was really facing a dilemma. Does he break the, you know, does he face contempt sanctions by the judge? And all this? Will he go to jail? <laughs> so he had a friend drive him across the state line. And the story was that he, like, hid on the floorboards of the car so he couldn't be detected as the car went, you know, from the campus of Mississippi State. That is State so Point. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they played the game. Loyola beat them um, and went on, you know, they won the national title. But, and then uh, supposedly, too, the story was when the Mississippi State team returned to campus, they had a, like a parade for them. Uh, you know, and that, I, I, obviously there were still bad times in Mississippi in 1963, but, you know, it a, was a sign of some progress that, that, uh, that they were greeted as heroes. But, um, but how horrible that they had to go through all those oh, hoops. It was I insane. mean, that's insane. Yeah, it was completely insane. So Loyola ultimately they made it to the Final Four, and then they won the national championship a game uh, against University of Cincinnati. And to their credit, Cincinnati also wasn't you know they did they did the same thing. They were going to play whoever they wanted to play in any given situation. They had multiple black players. They didn't. They violated the rule as well so you had a national title game and you know college basketball has always been a big deal but at that day in that time period it was bigger than the nba um or bigger than professional basketball generally uh and so you know there was a a nationally televised national championship game where at any given time there were maybe nine or ten black players on the court at once um in any event it was a big deal it was very big so that's my so Loyola that was, uh, So that was the last time that they won. So that was the only time Loyola won the national title. So if they, so if Illinois Cincinnati, wins, by the way, went on to win the national championship. I want to say the next year. Okay. Anyway. So if Illinois and Loyola plays, then Loyola loses. Then Illinois would play whoever wins the next. Yeah, and I haven't looked yeah. at the bracket set carefully. I mean, I think you know, I think that it is likely that Illinois will get to the Final Four. It may even be fair to say that it's likely that they'll make the national. I mean, listen, I know I'm, uh, this is not, this is not me being um, biased, although I clearly am biased. I mean, they are, they're probably playing better than anyone else right now. They won the seven games in I a row at the end of the their, season. I um, think their confidence is really high. You their know? confidence is high. They, they're they not distracted. You know, they haven't been... In, in 1989, they had a really great team. Um, and they were ranked number one uh, uh, at a couple different points during the season. They went into the tournament, I think, as the number one overall seed in 89. Ended up making the Final Four, but losing to Michigan in the last second. They beaten Michigan twice by... Uh, like an average of 11 points during the regular season. Really dominated Michigan when Michigan was supposed to be the elite team that year. Of course, it turns out they were because they won the national title. They beat Illinois and then they beat Seton Hall in the final. Um, but but they were they were under, Illinois was under a lot of pressure. Dick Vitale was in love with that team. <laughs> and they had, they had, you know, they had Kendall Gill and uh, Nick Anderson and a bunch of guys who ended up uh, you know, playing professionally, Kendall Gill probably the most prominent of that group. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that team was under a lot of scrutiny, a lot of pressure. Uh, in 2005, they were definitely the number one overall seed. They went all the way to the last game of the regular season before they lost. So they were like 30-0 and or 31-0, oh, and wow. then they lost um, to Wisconsin or Ohio State. I can't remember. Some team in red. Um, made it all the way to the national championship game, lost to uh, Carolina. But again, that team was, that was Darren Williams, uh, D. Brown, I think, was on that team. Anyway, another high-profile team. 
The great thing about this is, I mean, there are some high profile players on this team, but the fact is, is that this, you know, this environment kind of suits them because, you know, people have not paid as much attention to sports generally and, and college basketball probably as they would in a normal season. Oh, for sure. So they kind of snuck in there. And, and Illinois did not have a great first half of the season. I mean, they're pretty good, and they were ranked a good part of the time. But it, they, it wasn't, you would not have thought of them as a top 10 team in the first half of the season. The second half of the season, they were just completely dominant. Um, and, you know, down the stretch, they, they, they beat, um, you know, Michigan at Michigan. They beat Iowa at Iowa. They ended up, you know, beating Ohio State in overtime for the, to win the Big Ten tournament. They are not, by the way, just, just to clarify, mm -hmm. Illinois was not the Big Ten champion, even though they won the tournament. The okay. Big Ten tournament, because under the way the Big Ten does it, the champion, the team that's the champion, is the team with the best record at the end of the regular season. The tournament is to determine who gets the conference's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament, which is kind of a joke because it's almost always one of the top two or three teams, and they're going to the tournament anyway. But the fact is, is when you see all the merchandise now, it doesn't say right. Big Ten champions. It says... Big Ten tournament champions. So it makes it, it is a distinction. Okay, so when we saw them that one time when we saw them at United Center, that was just a regular season game. Yeah, they just happened to be in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. They used to do that. Because I was going to say, I'm like, I don't think that was for like a final like a uh, thing. No, but that was a. I, they, they always play big games there. They they once played um, one of my favorites. They played LSU when Shaquille O'Neal was there, and I don't know. I had this little tiny guard named Rennie Clemens. I swear to God, Randy Clemens was not six feet tall. <laughs> he was a great player, but um, but he he didn't dunk on Shaq, but he did. He he scored on a layup, basically going right over Shaq's shoulder. I was gonna say climbing up his. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was one of the most beautiful things I ever saw. A little tiny Randy Clemens, <laughs> this perfect little finger roll, right? I mean, Shaq had his arms up, and he just he went right between, right over his shoulder, <laughs> lay, laid it in. It was a beautiful thing. But yeah, they you know that's the thing. I mean, this season has been weird because teams don't want to travel that much. They didn't have a lot of sort of like marquee games in the preseason like they would normally do. They did beat Duke at Duke this year, um, which is always a good thing. Anytime Duke loses, that's a net gain for all of us. <laughs> um, but uh, but they beat Duke. But you know, but the Big Ten as a conference is largely considered to be the best conference this year. And the second half of the season, they just completely dominated. I think they only lost two Big Ten games the entire season. Wow. And, you know, or maybe it was more, but very few. Um, and, you know, they won, like I said, they won the last seven or eight games in a row. Clearly going into the tournament, playing as well or better than anyone. I mean, it really is. I mean, the two clearly elite teams are, are Gonzaga and Illinois. And that... Should be the national title game, but we'll see. All right, we'll predict that's what's going to happen. Right. And we'll put money on it. No, I'm just right. kidding. <laughs> now that you can bet on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Do they, no. I'm sure they have that on the phone for the... Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't We're bet. against that. <laughs> I don't bet. Um, that's exciting. Uh, so so they play Friday. They play Friday okay. around noon, and then I don't know what time. If they win Friday, they'll play Sunday. That's very exciting. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yep. Um, so yeah, I am going to predict that um, the next time that we um, chat that, oh no, they haven't played yet because we'll talk on Thursday. Right. Um, so by Saturday we'll know. By Saturday. And we'll know whether or not they're playing Loyola, which again, of course I want Loyola to win, but I hate the idea of the only two teams I would bother to root for in the conference, not, not just having to play each other, in the, I said in the conference, in the tournament. Not just having to play each other, but having to play each other in the second round. That's a lot. I know people are excited about it, but I hate that. Because one, you know, right. and one way or the other, I'm only going to have one team left. Right. <laughs> and that ain't right. No. They should have figured that out differently. I Especially think they, since different I, teams. They do it on We purpose. watched a little bit of how they were making the determination of it. And it was just like whew, way over my head. I was like, I didn't understand a word that you it's, said. It's complicated. And I, I personally think they set up games like, you know, if you're not from around here, it wouldn't make any difference no. to you. But 
but they know that they're setting up. It's not just that they're setting up a game that's going to be super emotional because the two teams play in the same state and, you know, and all that. It's also, and this is what bothers me about it, they're try, they want, they, the, the selection committee wants upsets. So they set up a game like that, actually in the hope that it's an upset. And I love Loyola to death, will always support them in any other circumstance, but I will be crushed <laughs> if Loyola beats Illinois. I'm just going to be blunt. I'm just going to be blunt. I will be in a bad mood <laughs> if, Loyola beats, if Loyola beats Illinois. And it's not anything against them. It's just that this is the year that Illinois very well could win a national title. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and I've had my spirit crushed many times <laughs> many, many for this years. Team. It's the last piece of the puzzle because the Bears won a Super Bowl, Bulls won many NBA championships, Blackhawks Black won three titles in six or seven years. Sox. Well, the Cubs won the World <laughs> Series in 2016. So, the last piece of the puzzle is for Illinois to win a national title in football or basketball. Then you got the trifecta. And it's not going to happen in, in football. But basketball, that's a distinct possibility. All right. So if you guys are um, college basketball fans, let us know. And if you're rooting for a team, or if one of your teams is, uh, let us know who that is. Unless it's Michigan. Yeah. I don't want to know. Then no comment. Yeah. I don't know. If you're rooting for Michigan, I don't want to know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with us. Um, Michigan is a very good team, by the way. Yes. Uh, and we, um, what was I going to say? Well, that's what's going on with us. And uh, we will see you on Thursday. Have a good night, everybody.